Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and I like to review fountain pens, ink, paper, and all that kind of good stuff related to pens, and especially stuff just from all over the world. A few weeks ago, I went to my post office box. And of course, sometimes, you know, there are bills and promos from the post office about using the post office, which seems like a waste of post office funds. But anyway, because I'm already there. Sometimes, though, I go... And there is a package with a pen or ink or paper or something like that. Sometimes I know it's coming. Sometimes I've ordered it. And sometimes there is one that is sent in for me to review. And this is one of those pens. Kieran from India sent me a Camlin Trinity pen. He says that this is a very popular and affordable fountain pen in India. And he says not that many people seem to review the pen in the fountain pen world. So would I like to share it here in a video. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share with you my impressions of the Camlin Trinity today. It is an affordable fountain pen from India, and India knows a thing or two about making some great fountain pens. So let's flip that camera and dive right in. All right, here we have the Camlin Trinity. Let's take a close look at its design and features. First, I think the most distinctive thing about this pen's design has to be the clip, which comes almost like a tassel or kind of reminds me and i cannot think of the flower or the plant that droops like this but there's one that that has a look like that it's kind of a tropical plant i just don't can't remember what flower or where i've seen it but that's what this reminds me of anyway kind of an interesting design as it sort of flows like a waterfall down the side of the cap and we do have a bit of branding on that clip. Kakuyo, that's the parent company, I believe, and Camlin. And then down below that, we have the Camlin Trinity stamped into that brushed stainless steel cap. And you do have a gold-colored trim band here at the base of the cap. And then an injection-molded barrel. This one, of course, is blue. And you can see that injection molding little dimple there at the end. And that is the exterior design of the pen. Then as we move to the cap, that cap is a nice little snick, little snap cap. And you see more of that gold tone trim band, a plastic grip section, which is a little bit thin like some other pens, like the about like the Pilot Metropolitan or the uh, Parker Jotter, which you will also be reminded of as you look at that nib. And that nib is the same style nib as that. I don't think it's the same size dimensions or anything else, but the same style as the Jotter. So if you have a Jotter or a Vector, very similar nib to that. And then just a slightly thinned plastic feed and another trim band here with just a little bit of that blue plastic as the final trim band going into that short nib and feed. Then as we open up the barrel, that's plastic threads on plastic threads, and you find that it does have an included converter. Now one of the ways this pen is marketed is that there are three ways for you to ink the pen up. One is with the included converter, which is the push me pull you type of piston converter. As you know, if you've watched this channel for a long time, these are not my favorite. I'm kind of softening a little bit just because of the pens I have with these converters. All of them have worked just fine. They're functionally they're fine with some of them you do lose a bit of capacity when they have this long of a mechanism so uh, that's kind of one of the reasons that i am not always as thrilled about them but this one has worked just fine and then you can fill it of course with an international standard let me see if i can do this without making a mess yes you can get an international standard cartridge and you can put that in the pen like that. This is still actually the converter, but you know, looks the same from that end. Or this pen can be eyedroppered, and then it would have a pretty good ink capacity. So you do have options. I know a lot of you, when you see a plastic pen, that's one of your first questions is, can I eyedropper it? And yes, you can. You can eyedropper this pen. So there you go. That's a quick overview of the design of the pen. Now we'll do a quick size comparison and then get on to the writing. Okay, so here we have the Camlin Trinity, and it is next to a Parker Jotter, very common pen. There are some shared traits there, and a Pilot 
Metropolitan here. Hong Dian, Light of Hope, Blue Pen. This is a Hero 616, a Jin Hao 51A, and a Can Write. We also have, just for good measure, a Pilot Varsity. That's kind of in the same budget area. A Lamy Safari, just because a lot of you can relate to the size, along with a Platinum Preppy. Also, in some markets, these would compete for the same attention and in similar price range. And there you have all the pins posted. And there are all of the pins uncapped and unposted. All right, now before I get into the writing, it does post deeply, securely, no rattles, no anything, no bad behavior with the pen whatsoever in that regard. This is the Camlin Trinity. And this is a fine nib. And the ink today is Lamy Blue. I believe that skip on the downstroke was me, I think. I've not had any skips or hard starts or anything, so I'm pretty sure that was probably me. Not too bad on ink. Oh, I already did that one. That's okay. We do repeats every now and then, you know? Little hiccup here and there. I find the nib is not the most buttery smooth, but it is a nice nib with just a little bit of feedback. You might hear that. That is not scratchy at all. I would say fairly typical for a fine and uh, not bad at all in this price range. The only thing I would say about writing with the pen is that that's a thinner grip section than I typically like, but I think that about my Jotter and about my Pilot Metropolitan as well. Again, about the same size as those. If you've written with those, you kind of know, especially with the Jotter because of the short nib, you kind of know the feel and writing style of the pen. It's probably comparable to a Parker Fine as well. So the pen really does write quite well. I've written with it quite a bit over the last couple of weeks, and I find it to be a really reliable writer. Again, I've had no issues whatsoever with the pen or with the converter. It has written well, and I would say that this is a good everyday pen. Great student pen, work pen, that kind of a thing. I think that's probably its primary market. And it, yeah, it's a good pen. And it does have that bonus, as they've marketed it, of having cartridge, converter, and ink dropper. So I know a lot of you really like to ink dropper your pens, and so that becomes a really handy thing for you. There is one more thing that I should mention that I think I forgot in the design overview of the pen. So you might be wondering, since this piece of metal comes out the way that it does, and because that would leave a gap here, very slight, hard to see maybe on camera, but that might leave a gap there where air would get through, right? That was my first thought when I saw this. Does it have a plastic liner? And the answer to that question is yes, it does. It has a plastic liner, and in the time that I have used the pen, I can't say, you know, you leave it in a drawer for a month, it's not going to dry out. I don't know. But in the time that I've been using the pen, off and on, for the last couple or so weeks, I have had no issues with dry out at all. So it has been, at, at the very least, it has been good, reliable, average pen in that regard. And uh, that might be a question you'd have. It was a question that popped into my mind as soon as I saw the design of that cap. And so that has not been an issue I'm glad to share with you. So overall, good 
daily driver kind of a pen. I have enjoyed writing with it. Thank you very much for sending this in for review. As you can see, it writes a nice line, nice and crisp. No issues there at all either. This is Rhodia paper, by the way. And uh, yeah, I can recommend this pen. This is a good pen and a, a really good deal in the right markets. I think he said in India, it's just like a couple of dollars. It's probably going to be more here in the U.S. And then, you know, competition gets pretty stiff. But if you can get that at a good price, that's a good pen. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. God bless you. Have a great week.